So I'm happy to be here to talk about critical thinking and certainly to relate it to global challenges. I must admit that I was a little intimidated as I started preparing this, thinking that here I'm going to talk with the free thinkers who probably think more critically than any other group that gets assembled in town about critical thinking. And then I arrived and saw David Cole, and I think he's probably been thinking about critical thinking longer than I have and certainly more in depth. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to start uh, at this point. And What I'm going to do is to, as suggested, to talk about critical thinking. I'll have a definition first of all, then go with a, char a CARS checklist, as was described in the introduction, uh, and then to apply that to a particular uh, issue, and that is immigration. The title of the uh, topic is Mass uh, Deportation Can Save America. So we'll, we'll take a look at uh, what uh, Brett Stevens has to say about that. We'll then go on and take a look at that logic model from the Foundation for Critical Thinking and apply that to the same article. Part, partly it will emphasize that different models of critical thinking emphasize different things. Uh, then there's some local uh, news as well that we'll look at, at least opinion pieces. Uh, one is a statewide view that the skyrocketing electrical prices uh, threaten Minnesota mining, and then a rebuttal to that from uh, a local person, uh, Minnesota must move aggressively to less costly renewables, and then there's a rebuttal to the rebuttal as well. We won't probably get to that one, but uh, I did include it for you in some of the handouts that are there. And then we'll see if we get a chance to take a look at some other things and try to leave some uh, time for questions and answers somewhat when we're going through the material but also try to leave a little bit at the end. We're starting a little late so I'll try to maintain at least the one hour uh, that does the stipulation that uh, was requested of me. So let's get started. A definition of critical thinking. So uh, this is a complex definition. It's uh, what it's 32 years old, I believe. I retrieved it, however, just a couple days ago again from the Foundation for Critical Thinking. You'll notice on your handout that there is a link to uh, this definition, so you can get to the foundation. It's just criticalthinking.org. And what it says is that critical thinking is the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesize, and or evaluating uh, information gathered from or generated by, and it has a list of sources here, observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, communication. And then it's a guide, this critical thinking is a guide to belief, what do you believe, in action, what do you do? So it suggests as well that it, in its exemplary form, it is based on universal intellectual values that transcend subject matter uh, divisions. And they include uh, clarity, accuracy, precision, consistency, relevance, sound evidence, good reasons, depth, breadth, and fairness. So it's a relatively high standard, obviously. But there's a number of key elements there. You can take a look at it being intellectually disciplined. Uh, it's a process. To get rid of that, uh, of uh, actively and skillfully conceptualizing and a number of other activities that you do there as well. It relates to information. It's the way we take in information. And then to have certain kinds of criteria for looking at that. So with that introduction, any questions or comments about that uh, rather elaborate uh, definition? Will this be on the test? Yes, it will be, Charles. Uh, <laughs> verbatim is what I'm expecting from you. OK, so <coughs> that's the definition. Then on your uh, summary sheet, uh, and also online, there's a uh, list of global challenges. So I'll look, give you a little bit of background on this. A guy named Eric Peterson from the Center for Strategic International Studies, which is a very highly rated think tank in Washington, D.C., went and talked to many of the 200 policy analysts that look at world issues and said, what are the most important things that are, we're going to face in the next 20 years? And what they came up with 
was population, including things like growth, aging, migration, and urbanization. We're going to look at migration today. Resources, and you can see some subcategories there. Technology, information, again, subcategories. Economy, conflict, and governance. So what we're going to do today is we're going to apply to two of the subcategories, really. Population, we'll look at migration. Uh, in resources, we'll take a look at energy and climate change a little bit. And if we have time, we'll do some technology looking at biotechnology and looking at how to think about those things. So uh, these, I believe, are the biggest issues we're going to face in the world. So it's an imp they're important issues to take a look at. The first model that we'll use then is the CARS checklist. And uh, one of the things that I've done is, is that there are links to all of these things uh, on your handout. So if you want to go and take a look at it, this is a co complex list, but uh, a link. But you can just search for CARS checklist and you would get uh, information like this. And they have a fairly elaborate set of criteria here related to the CARS checklist. And I'm going to give you just an overview. So if you take a look here. They have information about credibility, evidence, evaluation tip, uh, clues to lack of credibility, and evaluation tip, and then they go to accuracy. Well, we're not going to be able to look at all those in detail now, so what I will do is just skip to the summary. So uh, what is suggested by this checklist, and this was developed actually by McGraw-Hill to help students think critically about things they get off the internet. It was developed probably initially, and I've been using it uh, since, oh, probably about 1995. So it's uh, stood the test of time and also been expanded during that time. So they take a look and say, when, you, when you're looking at some kind of information, particularly that that you get off of the internet, you ought to take a look at first the credibility. Let's take a look at, is it a trustworthy source? Is it the quality of evidence and argument, uh, author's credentials, organization they might be associated with, and so forth? And the goal here, then, is an authoritative source, a source that supplies some good evidence that allows you to trust it. OK, so credibility. Uh, secondly is accuracy, that the information is up to date, detailed, exact, comprehensive, uh, and it has uh, intentions of completeness and accuracy. The goal here then, a source that is correct today, not yesterday, and a source that gives the whole truth. That's hard. The R then is for reasonableness, and this is fair, balanced, objective, reasoned uh, information. Uh, so there's not a conflict of interest, uh, absence of fallacies. Again, a goal that engages the subject truthfully and reasonably, a source concerned with the truth. And finally, then, the S in the CARS is support. Are there listed sources, contact information, available corroboration, uh, claims that are supported, documentation, and so forth? The goal here is to have a source that provides convincing evidence for the claims made a source that you can triangulate and to find at least two other sources that would fulfill that. <laughs> okay, so let's apply that then. Uh, I did put, uh, I think, uh, about four copies of uh, mass deportation, okay? There's a, it says mass deportation, mass deportation can save America. Okay, so what I want to do is to use this particular article written by Brett Stevens, appeared in the New York Times uh, a little less than two years ago. So you have to look on with someone else uh, and read through this. And I'd like to just take a couple minutes then and ask you to read to, through it, because we're going to use this particular opinion piece to critique, to then use the CARS checklist to critique, and then also the logic model uh, from the Foundation for Critical Thinking. So just uh, take a little bit of time now and read through that. You have to share one with another. First of all, if you think about the definition of critical thinking, it says what you want to do is to analyze and synthesize. And one of the ways I think about that is to say, well, what's the main point that this particular author is trying to get at? How would you summarize that? Again, brief, brief comments. 
How would you summarize this uh, opinion piece? We need immigrants. <laughs> we need immigrants? Okay. Okay, avoid the deadbeats and welcome the newcomers, okay? Well, the hostility to immigration is short, not very, very in-depth in thinking. Yeah, so partly what the critique is of the thinking about immigration that was pervasive uh, in some parts of the uh, our, our nation at that time, back in 2017. Anything else that you'd add to that? Okay, uh, certainly uh, according to the data that is suggested here, the best and the brightest are making contributions of the immigrants, certainly compared to the non-immigrants. Okay, so then let's take a look at the CARS checklist. If we go back to that. So, uh, if you take a look at credibility, how credible is this piece? Very. Very? Okay, well, what, on what basis would you say it's credible? Any country has a right to control who comes to their country. To me, that's the basis of the uh -huh. so You just can't. Any country, it doesn't really matter. Where in the world that you have a right to control who comes to your country. Okay, and in terms of credibility of this piece and this author, how, how, would, you, how would you critique it? I'd have to, I'd have to give a, did not complete the work because we don't have, we don't have an organization, we're not providing with that information. Yeah, so that's what you'd want to be looking for. Well, it is from the New York Times, you know, generally reputable depending on who you talk to. Uh, and uh, this particular guy, Brett Stevens, won a Pulitzer Prize back in 2014. You know, so you take a look at uh, his overview on uh, Wikipedia. You can critique that source as well. Uh, but I, I did take triangulate and other sources say the same thing here. But uh, you know, he's uh, you know, worked with the Wall Street Journal, um, then was hired to the uh, New York Times afterwards. So certainly some uh, well thought of organizations. So probably reasonably credible. How about accurate? You see anything in here that you would say, boy, that doesn't look accurate to me? There's one thing I would critique about this particular piece. Uh, it relates to the first criteria there under accuracy. It's almost two years old. You know, is, it, is that information still accurate? Be something to think about. You know, as I looked through it, I couldn't see anything that was not accurate from my knowledge. You know, and if you look, you know, drawing 50 plus of you here, do you see anything that's not accurate based on what you know? So we'll, we'll give it, it, well, no, it, it cites some things, so you could go and check the sources. But uh, again, at the surface of things, based on 50 people reviewing it, uh, nobody's saying, boy, that looks wrong to me. How about reasonableness? <laughs> again, you know, uh, this is a somewhat biased group in particular ways. A any other comments on the, the reasonableness here? Yeah. We do have to remember yeah, so it's uh, if you read just the uh, the title, which I did initially, I said, "Boy, do I want to take a look at that?" When I was looking at it online, uh, you know, uh, 21 months ago, I said, "I don't know if I want to take a look at this." And actually, uh, Stevens is a somewhat conservative uh, columnist as well, mm -hmm. but it is satire. Yeah, Dave. Well, he uh, cites some features that the immigrants have compared to the existing population. One is much higher levels of religiosity. Another is a much higher birth rate. Those, uh, I think he thinks those are pluses, but you might have reason to think they're minuses. C certainly. I, I think partly what he's doing there is to cite that for the purpose of uh, 
speaking to the religious right. You know, so if you want to uh, have people who are Christian in their viewpoint, uh, people on the religious right, you know, immigrants are an advantage there. Dem demography is another issue. You might also want to look at some other features of the immigrants. Like what's the crime rate that they have through? Yeah. The high school completion and other things. Yeah, so there's a lot of things you could take a look at here. Yes? I just wonder, for a secular state, why even that statement shows up? For a crit critical thinking point of view, yeah. that statement is very biased statement. Yes, and we'll, get, we'll, we'll find out perhaps a little bit more about that when we get to the other model, okay? How about the, uh, the sources of support here? Again, it's, there, there's a limited amount of words that he can use because it's an opinion piece, it's piece but uh, is, it, is there some support for what he says? If you have citations, so you would have yeah. picking his data. Yeah, so uh, there is... There are citations which support just about everything that he says. You know, you, it might take you a little work to go and find them and to see if, in fact, the conclusions that he is reporting are, in fact, the conclusions of that particular study or whatever it is. Okay. So what happens when you take a look at this particular piece from the point of view of the CARS checklist? In general, it's credible. Mm -hmm. Well, I think he has a little too much emphasis on uh, religion and God-fearing people and things like that to be really credible for me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, you know, partly you think about the audience and of Times readers. Uh, you know, there, there might be some conservative folks and he might be read by some conservative folks. And I would guess that's his audience for that particular uh, statement. Let's move on then, though, and take a look at a more complex view of critical thinking. Now, I happen to like this one, and I like to use it with my students because it's pretty straightforward, and I can remember it. The, che the CARS checklist, okay? Credibility, accuracy, reasonableness, and support. Well, let's take a look at a more complex uh, model, and this is on the reverse side of the thinking critically about global issues. And hopefully it'll work here as well. So, in total, what this says, what this model says uh, from the foundation of critical thinking is that there are some universal intellectual standards. And I'm going to have to move the mic here and try to move around a little bit. So they say that clarity is one standard. So that comes up and it says, is it understandable? Uh, the meaning can be grasped, can you let, and then some questions to relate to it. Goes on to accuracy. Uh, are, is it free from errors or distortions? Is it true? You know, how, how could we check on that and so forth? Precision. Could we be more specific? No, no, is it exact to the necessary level of detail? Okay, uh, and then we go to relevance. You know, does it? Uh, excuse me. Got to move it over here. You know, is it relating to a matter at hand? Well, he's talking about immigration, so it does relate there. Depth, another issue there. Looking at containing complexity, complexities and multiple interrelationships. And then we can go on and take a look at breadth. Encompass multiple viewpoints, logic, parts make sense together, significance, focusing on important, not trivial, and fairness, justifiable, not self-serving for one side. So as you take a look at those criteria, and you think about this uh, opinion piece on mass deportation, what is it you see there? What are the relative strengths and weaknesses of this uh, relatively brief piece. These are some important criteria to take a look at. Partly it's a piece in the New York Times and you know they hire the best people they can and they're going to tr try to adhere to a number of intellectual values 
in that particular uh, publication. Uh, just going to share with you a couple of different ways of looking at the media. This is something called news prism. And what it does is to try to take a look at what is the point of view of different publications. So this is one of the criteria elements of thought. And what it suggests is that there are some that are more or less in the center. USA Today is suggested to be that, uh, US News, uh, CNN, ABC, The Economist. And then they start veering a little bit more towards the conservative or the liberal side. So again, if we go up here a little bit, we see down at the bottom, we get some uh, that are really moving very much to one side or the other. So Breitbart and the Daily Caller are very conservative or right-leaning. Mother Jones and Alternet are very much on the opposite end of the continuum, veering towards left and liberal. Now, again, you can critique this. This is something that's been evolving over time. But I know that uh, when I take a look at uh, MSNBC, for example, I might even put it down a little further uh, on the scale, uh, that it's going to be generally pr provide liberal and left-leaning ideas. And I certainly know uh, if I take a look at Fox News, I might put them a little further down as well, uh, that that's going to be more on the right-hand side. Let me show you something that's a little bit more complex than that. Okay, so this is complex, right? Uh, so what it does is it has a couple of different criteria here. Again, it's left and right, and it's the same orientation with the more liberal on the left and the more conservative on the right. And then they have across the top there, you know, some neutral, relatively neutral, but then, uh, in addition, on the, uh, on the left-hand side there, they have some other criteria on which they rate these different organizations. If you take a look up here, you can see the AP, Reuters, Bloomberg, NPR, C-SPAN. They're all pretty neutral, and they're originally, they're original fact reporting. And then they've got down here, you know, they move towards uh, analysis, opinion, fair persuasion, uh, selective or incomplete, or propaganda contains misleading information. So uh, if you add that additional uh, information here, you get this red, triang red, red triangle, which is labeled nonsense damaging to public discourse. Okay? Uh, or the orange rectangle is extreme unfair interpretations of the news. So you can find Fox News over here. Uh, if you look for MSNBC, it's going to be on this side. I'm trying, I can't see it right now, but it's going to be in this area over here. So it's certainly biased left, but it's a little bit more fact-based. Okay, so this is a way you can take a look. And if you take a look at the Times, you know, that's going to be in the more liberal and Let's see, it's right in this area. I can't really pick it out right now. But it's, uh, again, fact-based original report reporting and a little towards the left, skews left. Okay, so let's take a look at these different elements that are suggested by this model. One is the point of view, the frame of reference, the perspective, the orientation. When you take a look at what is written by Brett Stevens, how would you characterize that in brief comments? Uh, on issues like climate change, uh, he says that climate change is occurring and it's uh, harmful, uh, also that it's caused by humans, but he says we shouldn't be addressing that, we should be addressing things like terrorism. You know, so he's a little more conservative on some issues. So he's labeled by some people as a climate denier. Yes, part of his point of view too is he was raised in Mexico City. You know, and uh, so he has, you know, he's looked at the world from outside. And when, the, when he was in Mexico City, immigration was a big issue. It was people coming from Mexico to the United States. And he probably knows more about the Mexico point of view than a lot of us do. What do you think the purpose is of him writing this? In 2016, he was part of the Stop Trump movement. And part of what I think his purpose is is to challenge the... Um, the information that Donald Trump puts out into the uh, ether. So I would guess that's one of his purposes. What's the question at issue? 
he, he talks about mass deportation. He at one point says, you know, I'm not, I'm not serious about that, but you could make a case for it uh, and for a different group than what uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the president is advocating. There, there was an issue at that time, uh, this is getting back partly to the, uh, the question and the point of view and the purpose, and that was around the dreamers. Okay, so President Trump at that time was saying, we've got to kick these people out, uh, and we're going to take some steps to do that. So partly what he's doing is to, I think, say, you know, these people didn't do anything wrong. They were just brought as young folks to the United States, and they're making real contributions. We shouldn't be looking at uh, trying to kick them out. It's still an issue, of course, but uh, at least uh, settle down a little bit. Information. Uh, so he's providing some information here. What do you, you, what do you think about that information? It suggests here you should say, restrict your claims to those supported by the data you have. Uh, search for information that opposes the position. This is that balanced part of it that was brought up earlier. How does he, how does it, how would you critique this article on that basis? Yeah, so it's as a whole, he's giving group statistics when in fact some immigrants may make many more contributions of the kind that he describes than others. So if you think about the immigrants that are coming from Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, they're probably different than the immigrants that have come from India or Korea. Next uh, uh, element of thought here is inferences. You know, what conclusions am I coming to? Is my infer inference logical? What, what inference, what conclusions is Stevens arriving at? Yeah, he, part of what he's saying is that our, our current discussion of uh, immigration doesn't look at some of the facts. Uh, concepts, what are some of the concepts that Stevens use? And he has comments like demographics, looking at that issue. He has uh, concepts like, uh, let's say, criteria for success in a society. He's chosen some, and not others. So it's a selective use of concepts. What assumptions does he make? What does he kind of take for granted? Yeah, that, that's a point well taken. He doesn't take a look at the internal structure and dynamics of our society that sets up some people to have a real challenge to succeed. Important to take a look there. Implications and consequences. Here you take a look at the claims or truths. Uh, you know, what is, the, what is the implication of what he's saying? Okay, that would certainly be a, a good one, wouldn't it? So that we critique out rather than take a look in, and partly to take a look at the systems that are creating the challenges that uh, many people face in the society. What would you say is the implication around dreamers? Based on this, you might want to, you know, people who <coughs> committed no crime are in the country, by all criteria that I've seen at least, are doing very well, we shouldn't be looking at trying to uh, eliminate them. Okay, so again, a couple things I wanted you to take away from this. One is that uh, this is a much more complete model, but I've been using it for you know a dozen years, and I have a hard time remembering all of it. You know, so it's it's something that is a, a challenge to use. But in terms of critical thinking. It's certainly an intellectually disciplined process of taking a look at some really important elements of critical thinking, both the intellectual standards and the elements of thought, and saying, well, what can I learn about the information that I have using those? The car's checklist, I can remember that and apply it reasonably uh, effectively, but it's very limited. There's some things like point of view, there's some things like assumptions that aren't, they don't come up as readily when you use that particular model. Well, I, I think about it a little bit in the context of purpose. You know, what's your purpose? Mm -hmm. uh, and partly your purpose is to uh, address a particular uh, kind of reader, I think. 
You know, so that you, you, you know the New York Times is going to have a certain kind of readership. You know that Brett Stevens is going to write to a particular segment of that leadership. So when they go through, they might be more likely to pick up him than Paul Krug. Well, I, I consider myself more liberal. And as I look around, the people I know are typically more liberal. And yet it's important to me, even though his purpose, I think, is to address conservatives. So I think it meets that criteria in this case. But you know, what's the primary purpose? And then what else might you achieve? And to recognize the bias. And partly, he attracts a more conservative reader, I would guess, because of his title, Mass Deportation. You know, some people would very much advocate that. But when they get into it a little bit, you'll see that it's something very different. Uh, in the social work department is where I taught. You know, there's a big emphasis on social justice and a very liberal orientation. And we have to recognize that and have to recognize that when we speak to other people, uh, we have to recognize where our bias is and also to seek out some counter information. So uh, it is an important consideration wherever you are. Uh, we have had students who are conservative and part, partly it's a learning opportunity for those who are more liberal to say, you know, we espouse uh, E equality and social justice and hearing everybody's point of view. But if somebody you're talking with in the class uh, differs with you, how do you respond to that? Yeah, just a couple of comments on that. One is I certainly have found over the years that uh, many students come to the university, UMD, the one that I know best, not having the foundation of values that our country was formed on. Let's just say it that way. The other thing that I'm aware of is that almost everybody comes to the university, a university like all others that advocate for critical thinking, but very seldom have they been exposed explicitly to critical thinking in high school or secondary education. Uh, and they, uh, I ask them, well, when I present things like this in class, I said, well, have you heard this in any other classes uh, at UMD? And many of them say no which is shocking to me, or do, or do they have any other models of critical thinking that, uh, that they've been exposed to? So it's a, a, a real challenge in that regard. So I, I'm aware that I'm at about the length of time that I was asked to speak, definitely. So this happens to be Vanessa Otero, who's the, who ha holds the copyright, and it's, uh, a, a, there is a, uh, an organization of which she is the primary person. So she's, she's providing this information, but obviously it's a, there's a bias involved in identifying bias. And, and where can I get a copy of that? Uh, well, I'd say again that, uh, first of all, on the handout that I think everybody has on critical thinking about global challenges, there's both uh, a link to this website, okay, that I created for this presentation. And there's also then, you can send me a message and I would then send you back the link. Because okay. some, sometimes the links are really complicated. Thank you. So, That's what I, I would like to see that. Yeah, take a look at it. You, know, it doesn't, you can't see it as well up on the screen like this. There's just too much information. Uh, so yes, there's lots of different ways of applying this. And I picked out one that I thought would be somewhat provocative and provide an opportunity to, uh, to take a look at the different elements and intellectual standards and cars checklist and so forth. But it's a, the models of critical thinking, first of all, different models are more appropriate in different settings. And secondly, I agree with you. You know, I don't go back and bring up the website for the uh, Foundation for Critical Thinking. Part of what I think about myself doing is uh, bringing into my common sense orientation to thinking about things the CARS checklist, my common sense way of thinking about things, certain intellectual standards, and also to think about what are the elements of thought, what are the you know, concepts that are related and so forth. So it's not like you know, it's just a very systematic thing, but when you do it for the first time, you know, I think it's important to do it in a fairly systematic way. So then let me summarize a little bit too. I appreciated some other summaries that you have provided. Uh, so again, I, I 
I agree with this um, model of critical thinking. It's not without its limitations, but uh, I think it is really important to have intele an intellectually disciplined process of thinking about ideas and th information that comes into you. Uh, you know, the, these different kinds of skills that they're so associating here, uh, describing, conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, those are all important things to do. Uh, and then you think about where do you get your information, okay? But also, the, perhaps the most important thing is the way you think very much determines what you believe and what you do. So if you're, you have all these errors in human inquiry, which are many, and biases and so forth, you, th you believe things that probably don't have a very good foundation in fact, and you do things that probably are not very appropriate given the information that is available to you. Then finally, you take a look here at the, the intellectual values, and I believe in all those. You know, I, I would like to see them better represented in our day-to-day -day life and certainly in the information that I get. The other thing that I would do is to say, we get so much information that we are deluged with at this point that there's no time in history when critical thinking was more valuable and more important. Because we get all this information, we seek information in a biased way, Google gives us information in a biased way, so we really need to be extra special uh, in terms of our efforts to try to get information that gives us a valid picture, a veridical view of the world is one way that I think about it. So with that, I'm going to thank you. I, I have some handouts up here that I was going to give you that you could use uh, these models to, uh, to analyze. We can get to that. But if you want them, please feel free to pick up some, uh, some handouts because I don't have anything to do with them for a while here. So uh, again, thank you for your comments too. I learned a lot this morning. Thank you.